person. <laughs> okay, I'll open the uh, Nottingham Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, October 19th. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Country tears of tis of the um, okay approval of the manifest. I'll make a motion. We approve the accounts payable manifest of October twelfth, two thousand fifteen, and the payroll manifest of October thirteenth, two thousand fifteen. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next. Um, approval of outstanding minutes, uh, October 5th and October 12th. Thanks for the copies, Dawn, that was really good. There wasn't a lot of discrepancies, but I think we have to clear up a couple of issues. Yeah. Who wants to make a motion on which one? Are we supposed to initial this or no? Yeah, we yeah. are. Yeah, you're right. I'll make a motion that we approve the October 5th, 2015 selectman meeting minutes as amended. I'll second. Um, what's there? Yes. Um, the thing of it was the discussion on, as far as I know, with a public hearing, you close public comment, and then after the action of the board, you close the you close the actual public hearing after the action of the board or prior to the action of the board? And I've seen it both ways, so I don't know. The Me neither. I, I would have, what I have always seen is that you close the public Comment. input section of the thing and, right. then, and then deliberate. Right. And then after, at some after, point. After the closing of the hearing. Yeah, that's the way budget committee has always done it, is close the hearing. Close the hearing altogether? Yeah. yeah and the that, public hearing is the public's opportunity to speak. That by closing the public hearing, you you limit the discuss. You then limit the discussion to the people that can vote on it. Um, we'll leave it at that. But can you clear that up for us? Yeah. yeah you can, I think we can get an answer from that from um, NHMA. Yep. Because I've seen it done, like Don says, both ways. So it would be, and so maybe both ways are right. Does that have an impact on the minutes? Yeah. Because I Where remember I closed the the chairman bonds had closed the public hearing, and that was. Uh, on page on 140, 143. Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute, am I on the right one? Sure, bonds the public comment portion of the hearing. Line 127. Line 127? Oh, yeah. I, I, I did close the public comment period, and then at the end I closed the public hearing. Yeah, I think you're supposed to close the public hearing first, and then the selectmen or whoever the board is deliberates and makes the decision. So how would you like this to read? I don't think it's, I, I don't think you're violating anything if you just yeah. leave it the way it is. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but let's clear that up so we don't have that in the, in the future. That's the way I was taught, so. Okay. There is a line 157 that has some question marks. So I was just confused when I read when I read this sentence. Selectman agreed to see how the updated ordinance and monitoring of tickets would work in the next year and ask citizens using the beach to let the town know if and how and if the new process is working. Yeah. I thought that's So are we talking about the updated ordinance or are we talking about so I guess the sign verbiage is the line one fifty four. I'd asked to I'd, I'd asked to, to know how the sign will read, right. that the sign should be um, strong, right? And I, I mean I take it for granted that you guys will see the sign before it's posted, you know, before it's printed and, yeah. and posted in the beach. So I'll, I, I'll just remove that question mark as now that I reread it. it it's just, Would you feel like better if on line one fifty nine if it said? Um, to let the town know how and if the new process and signage is working. That would be fine too. Yeah, that sort of combines the two thoughts. Because there seems to be two action. thoughts there. Line 159. Yeah. To let the town know how and if the new process and signage 
<coughs> yeah, that works good. The rest of it. Yeah, the rest of it seems okay. Okay. Um, so we have a second. Uh, a, um, we did. <coughs> and a second as corrected <coughs> or as amended. Yeah. Yep. So um, all in favor? Aye. aye. Did you say aye? Yes, I did. Aye. Okay. I said ear. Oh, you said ear? <laughs> You're voting present? I'm, I'm voting. You can only do that if you're like a senator. Voting or with my senses. <laughs> anyway, um, anybody want to make a vote? C E N S U S or you S E N S E N S E S. See, you're on it. On to um, uh, the minutes of October 12th. Uh, I'll make a motion. We approve the October 12th board of second minute meeting meeting minutes as amended. I'll second. Um, the was a it seemed to be there was a question on line 52 that these two statements seem out of context with each other yeah the the two that was my comment so it says discussion took place about possible alternative vehicles in uh, discussion took place about positive alternatives to purchasing other vehicles instead of the quint Chief Vilchok stated the risk may be may be a need to purchase multiple vehicles at the same time as the existing equipment remains actively used within a with a higher age. Those two sentences seem to be out of context. I was watching the minutes today, uh, the meeting on TV today. Yeah. And you pointed that out to him at that exact moment that they they didn't seem to they seem to be opposed to each other. Yeah. And that's exact. And he said yes. But I don't, so I don't even understand what. What it mean? What these two sentences mean? That I, I understand the second sentence. If we don't make a purchase now, then in the future we may be in a position you have to buy multiple vehicles at the same time. Well, I think because we're not going to if if the um, ladder truck doesn't go through the quint, the quint, yeah, then um, the next in the next year we might have to or the subsequent years we might have to purchase two vehicles because we're missing a year. Yeah, that's what the second sentence says. Right. But so, what does the first sentence mean? So can we break that up? Was it about possible alternative vehicles, or was it about pushing the purchase? Uh, there was yeah. there was two conversations. One one at one point, somebody asked him, John Warren. "Would you j why not just buy another regular truck?" Right. And he said, "I would pr I would just bring the Quinn back next year." Yeah, or something like you that. Know, he, I mean, he, you it know, was but, the in other words, yeah. oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, what he was saying was, he's prepared to. He's he's done all the work on the Quint. He's not done the work on a, another, another engine. Another vehicle, yeah. Because another engine wouldn't satisfy their needs. You okay. know, so those two thought processes have been merged into this paragraph, and I think that's where the 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 confusion came in for me. Nope. Discussion took place about possible alternative vehicles instead of the Quint. That's clear. For I, I think you say for purchase this year. After the quint, um, positive alternative vehicles to purchase instead of the instead of the quint. Right? If you, if you said discussion took place about positive alternative vehicles to purchase instead of the quint, period. Yep. And left it there, and then another paragraph said Chief Vilchok stated the risk. Yeah, see, it doesn't make it's, sense. No, it doesn't make so sense. You know, maybe Don should go back and, and look at the minutes. It's, it's sometimes I'm not even, I can go, I will go back and, and listen mm -hmm. to it, but I'm still not positive I'm not going to get it. And I think yeah. that's sometimes when you're not, you know, it's a kind of the after the fact that I'm here. Mm -hmm. So maybe Chris and I. It's such a good meeting to watch on tape, I'm sure. I watched it once. That was enough. <laughs> you should read it, should read it three times. I bumped into it today. We said um, Chief Vilchuk stated the risk of delaying a purchase. Right. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe a need to purchase. Yeah, that, would, yeah. that straightens yeah. it all out. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. That would help. But still make them two separate paragraphs. Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that done? I think so. Okay. And the rest of the, were there any other concerns? 
That seemed to be the only one. So we have a motion and a second to accept as amended. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right <coughs> You're up, Chris. Oh, no, sorry. No, nope. BOS first. Go ahead. So there was a budget committee meeting last week. Um, two sections were reviewed. Um, our first, um, our, our. Um, Latest numbers, which has had an, another month um, from the uh, from the previous one. There are three questions that were raised. Um, when was the on-call stipend last adjusted for the fire department? Have we adjusted that? In I thought we adjusted it like three or four years ago, but I don't remember when. What was that question again? The, the stipend, the on-call, the the on-call stipend for the I fire department. I do not believe we did it last year. Oh, I, I think don't it, believe we did it the year I before. I think it was three or four years ago. Yeah. But I, I need to get an answer on that. Okay. From, um, from Jay? Well, Chris. Well, oh, yeah, true, Chris. Okay. Um, what is in the fire um, rescue miscellaneous column? Because it was a whole $897 over. Hmm. I didn't quite know what we put in miscellaneous, but I think the budget was... 500 bucks or something. Um, and then the last one was, um, was the greater a lease, a lease purchase? And I answered, yes, I think it is. I think it was. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure it was based on reviewing the minutes. So I'll go, I, I have that answer. Um, Gene reviewed the CIP meeting highlights. Um, he talked about the Quint. Um, and he talked um, briefly about um, about the roads. Most of the discussion was about the Quint. Uh, clearly, the budget committee. I told the budget committee they, they had a lot of questions. I told them that clearly the chief will come in like he does every year and, and talk about it in more detail. I tried not to make any statements that were beyond what we already what we already know. You know, um, on the school side. Um, this, the school board chair is waiting to hear um, what the official shift will be from Dover to Co Brown for this year. Um, I thought that was a little inconsistent with um, when I asked the same question at the, at the deliberative session, and the answer was we don't expect any, but there's going to be some, so we don't know what that is yet. Um, there was uh, a statement of concern that the school budget, um, the school board is close to their current budget already, um, the one that they're on this year. But I, I think that was just a, um, a comment. I don't, you know, there was no specifics. It's already October, it's only October. Right. Um, and the same question that comes up every year on encumbrances came up again, and the school board chair took an action to explain what encumbrances are so that, that's for the next time. Um, I answered the question on the bar truck, or the, the pickup truck that was from the last meeting. Um, and I gave them the number of $47,000, um, which is $2,000 under budget. Somebody asked if that was, uh, what that was due to, and I explained the, the pretty detailed um, process that the that the chief and his team went through to get bids from four different dealers um, and then to work those bids hard um, and they ended up with the uh, with the Dodge so yeah, I think it's between 47 and 48 was yeah the, yeah I told yeah. Him about 47 it's under budget so that's it okay planning board yes Planning board met on um, the 14th uh, short meeting there was a public hearing on a lot line adjustment uh, on Saks Road. Um, that was um, no no big concerns or discussions about that. Um, 
there was um, Paul and Joanne have been working on new applications that you may have seen. I, I have some of them here if you want to take a look at them. Kind of what they're trying to do is simplify, make things clearer to people. It was so complicated. Yeah, make you know make it evident. For example, they've got this uh, project application checklist that is you know five or six pages. That's quite comprehensive. Excellent. I think they did a nice job on that. They've got um, design review application for subdivisions. They've got a, pro a new project application, a uh, subdivision conceptual consultation request, and I thought there was one other. Anyway, they put a lot of time and effort into this. Do you need to have done a good Are job? Are copies? Uh, yeah, they're the only copy yeah. I have. But yeah, that's okay. They'll be online at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to see? I see. Um, so the members of the planning board had a couple of minor comments about just usability. You know, things like uh, carrying headers over and um, stuff like that. So all minor, but uh, Paul's done great work on I that. Have to, I have to compliment um, both Joanne and, and uh, Paul because we worked at great length with um, Stratford Regional and couldn't come up with a really good application, comprehensive. Right. And so for those guys to be able to accomplish that is no small yeah. feat. Yeah, they did a good job. Um, we talked a little bit about impact fees. Um, they're still not able to find someone who can, who can do the study. Seriously? Yep. Um, so the, at our next meeting, which will be the week after next, um, we're going to have a discussion about impact fees then and kind of start to dig into whether or not we think it makes sense to have them. Uh, Ed Veal has some information that he shared with uh, the board after the meeting that I haven't had a chance to uh, to look at yet, but if you're interested, that's going to be topic of discussion at the next meeting. Um, is Stratford Regional Planning anybody that could help us in that respect? Um, I think Paul has talked to them. Okay. Yeah. And they're going to continue to try to get in touch with this person who supposedly has taken over for Bruce Mayberry, okay. who has disappeared, but they still can't, they can't connect with no this trace guy whatsoever either. So the only other thing that came up was that um, Ed and um, Dirk, the chair and vice chair, asked about the letter that was sent from the planning board to the Board of Selectmen on J July 9th, uh, where they were concerned in raising uh, questions about what they believe to be misstatements made by the Board of Selectmen. Um, regarding, you know, I won't read the whole letter and a half, page and a half letter, I think you guys have received it, but there was one comment that they felt was inappropriate about open space development and a uh, statement being made that open space development requires the town to provide conservation monitoring uh, of the open space and in their letter they go on to explain that this is inaccurate, uh, that the town is not obligated. The other statement was around um, septic system failures in open space design and um, a, a comment was made about based on new, new studies one member of the board of selectmen was concerned that the smaller lots have a higher rate of septic failure because they cannot support stone and pipe systems and they go on to explain that um, that this mat this <coughs> topic has been discussed in the past and um, that they don't believe you know, that there is a higher rate of failures. Um, you know, they say both open space and conventional developments both require a 4K square foot reserved area for a septic system. All septic systems must be approved and comply with the regulations set forth by New Hampshire DES. And um, as reported by our buildings inspector and those of other towns in New Hampshire, systems failures are not systematic. Um, so their concern is that they felt that there were misstatements made at one of our meetings that people read minutes and take what they've heard at the meeting as statement of fact, um, regardless of whether it is 100% accurate or not. Um, they are looking for a response. The final paragraph of their letter says, we hope this information is helpful in clarifying these topics. Please notify us with the acknowledgement of receipt of this letter, along with what steps the board, BOS, plans to take to prevent future misinformation being presented uh, as fact, as well as what steps will be taken to make these clarifications conspicuous and public. So they are looking for some type of a response based on that. 
Um, it was my comments, my concerns about both the septic system failure rates and um, the open space developments that garnered that letter. And um, I suspect they're, they're wanting some comment or action by the board. And so before you do that, let me kind of go over what I was very concerned about. Um, I feel stronger about my, my concerns regarding open space developments that, than when the subject first came up. I've been in town for over 40 years. I expect to be in town at least 40 more years. So I'm looking at both perspectives, how things were done in the past and what we are doing now that will affect Excuse the near me. future in 40 years from now. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but oh, I just thought maybe we should wait for Don. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. No, thank you. I didn't know this. You're going to be here for another 40 years? Yeah. You don't know, my family just keeps right on going. Oh, yay. That fell on the floor. Oh. There so, it is. Anyway, I know that there are those that are well-meaning that believe that the open space development is a means to acquire important open space for the town, and I understand and sympathize with their intent. But you have to look at the immediate impact of these developments, and you need to look to the future to see if there are any unintended consequences and pitfalls that may, be, may not be obvious now. As a selectman, that is what I do, and I am genuinely concerned that we are inadvertently causing premature growth in our town and a potential environmental problem in the future. Without a doubt, developers love open space development as it saves them substantial construction costs without noticeably reducing the per lot price. Couple that together with the rising tax rate in town that is making it difficult for landowners to hold on to their land. This makes Nottingham a ripe plum for developers to pick. I will address my specific concerns that begin in the Planning Board's July 9, 2015 letter to this board. Uh, paragraph 2, the Planning Board states that the, that the open space will be monitored by various land conservation groups and or homeowners associations. That is the plan. However, fast forward 15, 20, 40 years, and there is always the possibility that these, gro these groups no longer exist, are inactive or unable or unwilling to monitor these small parcels. Now what? It is certainly possible that, under the law, the town holds an executory interest in these open space parcels because if no one is there to enforce the conditions set forth in the Planning Board approval, the town would of necessity monitor and enforce these provisions. Paragraph 3, septic system concerns. This is very serious. There is hardly a person on this board or on any board in town that is more intimately involved and has a greater practical knowledge of septic systems and their failure rate than myself. I have a working knowledge of over 30 years and have observed that these smaller systems are failing sooner and at a greater rate than the larger stone and pipe systems, which are, the leach beds are twice as big and last over 30 years. I am concerned that when an approval is granted for a large open space development, there is going to be a significant number of systems in some degree of failure within 7 to 12 years. Oftentimes failure goes unnoticed until a serious problem presents itself. So if an approval is granted setting aside 50 acres of open space and 50 homes are approved on the remaining 50 acres with these small septic systems potentially failing at approximately the same time, what will happen to the quality of the groundwater and, and, and all or some of the wells? This is extremely serious. Couple this concern with the looming critical shortage of, trade, of all tradespeople, including septic system installers, designers, and pumpers, and we have the potential for a real crisis. If you are not planning on remaining in town for the next 15, 20, or 40 years, I suppose this is, that's not a concern, but it is a concern to me. I am told not to worry that these systems are all approved by New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. I, appreci I appreciate an HDES. However, I believe that this problem is just beginning to show itself as a result of the last housing boom and the introduction and widespread use of these smaller septic systems. Also, the longer you live, the more you realize that government is very slow to react and often announce later than sooner that something that they were sure was safe is now found not to be. I suspect that will be the case here. In summary, the planning board is here not to encourage or discourage growth in any town, but to direct safe growth. I believe this plan of action, open space development, encourages premature growth and has the potential to result in serious environmental problems down the road. And where we cannot forbid someone from putting in these smaller state-approved septic systems, it would be wiser to require two-acre building sites for the time being. Thank you very much. You're entitled to your own opinion. I just think it's awesome that we have a, a board that would send us a letter and that we would respond to it. Yeah. I find it ironic, given 
the fact that we had a room full of 40 some odd people chastising you and myself for sending a, a letter to another board. And I think that this ends up being an opportunity for a very good content rich exchange. Yeah, I, and I, I don't think that they should really stifle our opinion. I mean, we, we are entitled I, to our opinion. I, I'm not an expert in, in this area at all, so no, on the technical is. details, I have yeah. no... Nobody you know, is, an, I have is no, an expert. I have, I have no opinion whatsoever. I don't know exactly what to do about it. I just think it's great that there's the chance for dialogue. So, I, I mean, I, they're looking for a response. Um, you know, Mary, obviously you hold steadfast in your opinion. I, Absolutely. I think, you know, a, a, as the Board of Selectmen rep, I'll be happy to bring that back to them and say, here's Ms. Bonzer's. They, it, because it is sort of pointed towards me. Those are all my comments. Correct. Yeah. Well, maybe, you know, maybe the best thing to do would be for you to go to a, a planning board meeting and, and have an open dialogue with them. I wouldn't mind. I think that's a great you, idea. Why don't you go do that? I think that's a great idea. As opposed to passing letters back and forth. Want to get me an appointment? I will do that. Okay. Let me know. I will do that. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think that's an excellent I think we should you know, have maybe, a discussion. Maybe you have, maybe have Terry come along since he's in that business. Yeah. I, I don't think he has to. I don't think we need to include him, but as being an intimate part of that business, yeah. I know what's happening on the ground. And, yeah. and I think DES will figure it out, but it will take time. They'll need to you know, crunch numbers and that sort of thing. And by that time, we may already have gotten too deeply into this thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I, just, I think we should take a step back and, and let DES sort of absorb the information that's coming in now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank you guys. Okay, that's it for my update. Okay, I have none. Uh, I think you have a request for a quick public comment. Okay, uh, no problem at all. Yes, if there's I, a, I just want would you like to come right up and introduce yourself to the folks? And I'm Raylene Shippy Rice from 38 Garland Road. I'm here with my husband Dale Rice, who's sitting here in a wheelchair, and we both want to thank the board with great appreciation for the new handicap button. That well, you're um, welcome. It's tonight in. for the it's first in. time. It's in. It's in. Been in. I didn't I've even been, notice it. I've been meaning so much easier. Coming How did you find out? We used it tonight. We watched this it. Time? They saw it. <laughs> oh, because because no. I was I was just asking I was asking Chris Raylene and her last name is Rice, but because I wanted to send you an email last week because it, <laughs> because I I walked through it, didn't even know it was in, and and I went into his office last week and I said, when are we getting that emergency door? <laughs> and he goes. It's in. <laughs> so. well, what was funny tonight was I turned the wheelchair around and went to open the door and struggle, and Dale said, <laughs> "There's a button." There you go. <laughs> there, yeah. there is. Well, I, I think so, that I think that, I, and um, I, I'll just say for myself, and and I'm sure I'm sure Don has some good comments here too. You know, it's input from people like you that we need to hear. You know, we don't. I never even. You know, I never even Give thought, thought. Yeah. about that because I'm not in your situation, right? So I, it had never occurred to me, and you came to us at the elections, and you said, hey, what about, and, and it was like getting hit over the head with a two by four. It's like, oh, how could we be so um, insensitive, you know? So, so thank yeah. you for bringing it up. And it's such an easy you know? thing to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and, it's, it, and it will make a lot of difference. To a lot of people. Away. It's hard. So, yeah. It will make a lot of difference. So I just wanted to be sure to thank you publicly for taking that. Well, thanks. Step. We, well, thank we don't you usually we don't you, usually get much something else positive that, input. Can we adjourn now? Yeah. Your <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know. I think we want to be here to help. So if there's other things, and and yeah. by by m mentioning as as um as Mark said, you're helping other people who wouldn't mention. Yeah. So if you can think of anything else, let us know. Wonderful. Thank, thank you guys. You. All right. Have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Take, take, a, take a video. We'll make it go viral. <laughs> um, Mary, um, yeah, yeah. there was one thing I forgot to mention about planning board. Okay. Can I circle back? Oh, sure. You most certainly um, can. It had to do with the, the question that you guys asked me to ask them about the 34 foot yes. height. And um, Paul Colby, was, who was at the meeting said that that's actually determined by a national building association or a national building code 
inspectors association or something like that there's a very complicated formula that has to come up that has to do with coming up with the measurements from all four walls and he said it's a formula he doesn't even fully understand so I just wanted you to know it's not something that was de defined by our planning board it's okay. more like a national standard mm -hmm. okay. so that they, they, have they to just picked it up and ran with the yeah. standard yeah yeah we do we exactly. do yeah. So, sorry, I forgot to mention that. No, that's important. Um, so, the, it's theoretically then one side could be 50 feet high and the other side could be 25 he, feet. He didn't say it was as simple as averages. He didn't say that. Okay. He said that there, oh, was, okay. there was a more complicated formula. Well, if he says it's complicated, I imagine yes. it is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, town department reports. Just a few things. Um, we, we, the moderator, the supervisors, the town clerk and I have started talking about elections for next year. Um, we don't have a hard date on the presidential primary yet, but it's probably February. Um, and we're just starting to think about how to manage that quantity of people in this building. I know that the, historically the, the general and the presidential primary have been very challenging. Well, we, I thought, well, I we thought that we had already had a conversation. Presidential. Presidential, not, not primary. the primary, because right. we couldn't set a date and they couldn't schedule okay. it. All right. right. We were going to do it up the school um, because it's a weird. The date moves around. We couldn't get it into the school <coughs> calendar. What? Uh, the general, the school board discussed elections. Their last meeting gave formal blessing to what you had all discussed with them which is to hold the general election in November at the school. They'll schedule a teacher workshop that day. Um, I also asked the school board chair if, if there was any way to make the presidential primary in February happen at the school, knowing that it's a, it's a big change for them to, to take that on in the middle of the school year and yeah. it creates all kinds of childcare hassles and things. I know it was raised at the last school board meeting. I think they were gonna go back and kind of talk about it and think through it before they made a formal decision on it but it was one of the things that the our election people we we're just nervous about the number of people that um, we're going to try and move through this building we know we you know it's going to be thousands especially um, on a cold February night on a, it's a cold February day we have contested primaries on both sides so yep. it's going to be a big number um, what's the largest I Ask Terry, but do you know what the largest number is that we actually fed? I think it's a couple of thousand. Right? Yeah, I, I we have that. I don't have it in front of me, but um, so anyway, we 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 just threw it out and said, hey, you know, if you could make it work, knowing that it's a big yeah a big ask and not, and not trying to lean on anybody, but uh, we threw that out there just to see what would happen. Um, we have a uh, plan B for this building. The, the last time I think it was the general three years ago where we had people up and down the hall a few yes, times um, that seems to be the biggest worry from a safety and, and comfort and fire issue. right so um, would it be that we're gonna a, just if would it be that much of a problem if we had the doors so that if there was a fire they could come into the rooms leave them unlocked just fire. yeah that that w I think that happened in the last one somebody went through and unlocked them so that people could, could could get out through this side of this building but uh, the other thing that we're considering is running lines through here um, every office. we considered a couple things one was a big tent outside that we could well, with heaters, that's what Disney I was ask about. you know we yeah. could Disney back and forth a, yeah. a whole bunch of people and the other was um, uh, that we're thinking about is is having the entrance for the able-bodied to come through the food pantry to sort of to have people walk to the back of the building and, and create a single line oh. we have a side entrance over there so we can get as many people in the building where it's <coughs> um, without having that uh, racetrack up and down the hall that seems to be the biggest worry so we're, we're still kicking around the, the logistics on that but um, we want to get as many people inside for the weight as we can mm -hmm. without that three deep fire trap. So people that, um, would come through the food pantry? They would enter the building through the food pantry. There's a, there's a side exit back there and you know, it, it's walkable for people that can walk well. Go up by the police station yeah. and in that way. Wouldn't it be um, bad for people to actually walk through the food walk pantry? Walk and see, that's kind of a side benefit. Yeah. A side benefit, um, yeah. Maybe yeah. we could get people to bring donations as long as they're uh, coming in vote. Well, if they're going through the food pantry, you want to make sure they don't take donations. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Wash their hands. Uh, oh, oh, negative. dinner is provided. 
uh, and that was, if we if we did it that way, then we could run a we could run a rope up the middle of the hallway and, and keep the line on one side of the hallway and keep the other side of the hallway for for passage. We wouldn't Is be able to hold as many people inside as if we had, you know, racetrack the whole long hallway like we did. But I don't think that's worth it. So um, it didn't work bad. You know. Huh? It did not work bad, except that you you wanted to have people have an escape route. Yeah. And yeah. if we provided that, I mean, people were very warm. It was actually too hot. Yeah, and we don't we don't want to use in the winter. We can't depend on access to any other doorway in the building. Um, I mean, we can't use the back building. Not that I'd want to walk the general public through there anyway. Yeah. And this side of the building, we can't know that it's going to be clear to access. Yeah, so at certain times when it's mobbed, first thing in the morning, right? Last thing at night. It would be nice if it coincided with school vacation. <laughs> <It's> <gasps> very, oh, I yeah, I didn't think I, of that. I think it's earlier than that. It's earlier than school vacations yeah. later, yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's where we are with that. Um, we'll leave it. We'll leave it up in the air so we know. Um, until you have a, a firm date, and and. Yeah, to go to the school would essentially be a snow day, you know. Now who and, sets it? The Secretary of State for each state, or mm -hmm. okay. So when, we have to, about when do they come out with it? I think this year is going to break a little earlier than it has in the past because there's not as much bickering about who's, you know, there's nobody jumping up. Like, um, as I understand the New Hampshire law, the Secretary of State has to wait till everybody else sets their date and then goes okay. a yes, few days before that. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, yeah, that's true, too. But there seems to be some more order in the process this year and a little less politics. So, <laughs> um, well, if he said it for like July, <coughs> sure to be in front of everybody else. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the handicap access door is in. Thank you. Hey, hey. <laughs> thanks for letting us know. <laughs> uh, the Halloween party. There's a Halloween party this Saturday here in this building at one o'clock. Trick or treating is uh, the 31st from five to seven. What's it called? Trick or treating. Uh, oh, trick or treat or trunk or treat or is there some kind of other? Or treat? Oh, I don't know. The there is a trunk or treat thing. I don't. That's at the school, at the school but I don't. I don't know the. It's just a. Uh, Go on the school website. To yeah, find that information. yeah. Don't don't take don't get your information from me about what's that. What's your what's the trick or treat date? Thirty first. Thirty first from five to seven. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. And hey, Chris, why don't you give me something or both of those to post on Facebook for people? Okay. Um. And. I need your feedback on CIP, next steps and meeting date, uh, which we don't have to do now, but uh, if you want to. I think that we didn't finish the road because he had a whole list of, he had a whole list of things that went out in years that we never even talked about. And I think we need to circle back and, and there's a whole bunch of stuff for rec in there that we okay. need to talk through, okay. I think. In the CIP? Yeah. The, yeah, I mean, there's other sections, even if we're not bringing people in, yeah. there's other sections yeah. of it. We can we can discuss them and bring in someone if we feel we need to talk with someone. Yeah, well, have That's you good. read the rec ones? Um, I want to read them. Okay. The rec ones are a, uh, admittedly a, just a, Janet and I taking a wild guess in anticipation of the Marston discussion, which is underway. Well, that, so, that's kind of what, um, what we were waiting for, if I remember. It's been a while since I looked at them. We were waiting for some amounts coming in for what it would cost us to yep. have, have a plan yep. mm -hmm. drawn up by somebody. So that's kind of, all that stuff was sort of dependent upon that that's as right. to where it was going to go in the schedule. Yes. So we haven't heard. We have, we have, we have the RFPs all in. Oh, the, cool. the committee is meeting this week. Oh, great. Okay. So what day? Uh, Thursday. Thursday, like the 22nd. 22th, yeah. yeah. And that's um, last 10. What time do you guys usually meet? I think we're meeting You're at 6 30 or is it 7? Uh, I'll get it. Okay, 6 30 or 7, folks. Yeah. 6 30. Yep, uh, 6 30. Thank you. 6 30. So. And that's all I have for you. Cool. Uh, we have appointments. Not, well, we have, yeah, we have some. There's a. Uh, yeah, I see some people here already. Yep. That's um, for item A, so we can. So we might as well do that. Hold on. Um, this is. You want me to jump into A? Oh, absolutely. Um, 
the septic loading easement I wrote to you all in your package mr. Clement is here um, the um, we don't have a document that you can approve so uh, I think I just want to tackle the concept and any questions uh, and then when we have a document that you can formally endorse if you so choose you can knock that out quickly uh, at your next meeting okay um, I pretty much laid it out in the memo and I don't know what questions or concerns you have can you describe on this on this sketch map? I mean I read your words and I, I get the concept but can yep. you describe on the map what, what's doing going where and um, the tax map 24 lot 37 is the is the subject the house that is the subject of the okay septic system um, the town owned lot is the one above that or north of that okay uh, and the the not shaded but slash mark section proposed sewer loading easement plus or minus 3700 feet square feet uh, what using that land will allow the homeowner to do is put a, a bigger septic system on the on their own lot okay um, that system we're not going to do anything underneath the ground of the town lot we're not going to do anything above the ground on the town lot it's not going to be touched you just need a certain amount of so that's just, that's just an easement that's just an easement only it's, it just yep. means that there won't be anything touching yeah right. means you can't use that if we do grant an easement we won't be able to grant any other easements on that land for this purpose because you okay. can't overlap mm -hmm. those things and what's and what's directly north of that directly north of that is the other abutter of the town lot um that uh is is i'm sorry is the shaded area the entire town lot no the, the rest the, of it up there is the town lot yeah there's a, a a short dash line in the top upper right corner okay that is the other bound of the town lot okay so and does um, it does the well on mr mellow's lot also have a, a a circumference that goes over um into the town beach area yes okay. that that circle so that sort of uses up that entire oh I see that radius is the well radius for the other abutter so what we what we needed the one thing that we we needed to make sure of was sure. that this sewer loading easement didn't overlap with the right well right. So the, right. Right. Yeah. the well radius there is no rate there is no easement for the well in, it in place yeah. it just happened that way and it doesn't it's not necessary um, yeah, and it's not it's not a piece of property that the town would ever want to do anything with no as we went through the that list last year and said what do we want to keep what do we want to yep. get rid of this was identified by the fire department as one that you know what we could use it to get into the lake so um, okay and that's the and it's not really buildable it's um, we're not gonna do anything with it other than is, leave is, it there there a, is there an emergency lane into the lake from there no uh, uh, the the lay of the land would, wouldn't allow it's it. Pretty steep. No. So how do so they, they have so to how run would they get in? They'd have to run hose. Uh, run yeah. down. Yeah. Well, they can run hose down it. That's the you know that's the first yeah. thought. Um, and they could get. I don't know what the tree situation is. They might be able to get their boat down through there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they could they could probably carry the boat. Yeah. Down they there. They could get a boat if they had okay. to. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's worth um, keeping for that respect. Yes. Yeah. Um, so are, are we talking about an easement that has no end date? Correct. Like a lot of times easements are like 20 year easements. Or no, it, this is, this would go with the property and would be there. In perpetuity. In perpetuity. In perpetuity. So this would be, the easement would be written into his deed? Yes. Okay. Or alongside his deed. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. Seems to be um, a good solution. I think if the um, once the easement language comes in from the Clements and our, I assume our lawyer will look at it. Um, is there, does is, anybody have any? I, just a, I, I, I'm positive on it, but is there is there any reason that we would not want to do something like this? What what would are there any downside anything? No, well, no. The, the the one potential downside was that it would somehow limit the other abutter yeah um, that doesn't seem to be a concern right. um, this is not a um, this is not a need situation this is not a failed septic system that we need to do this in order to 
um, you know, oh, but let puts, somebody keep living there. It puts the Clements in a position where they can do some things with their property if they want to. Right. Um, and we sure can. Uh, my name is Sean Therrien. I'm the renter of the property. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clement is my father-in-law. Uh, my wife and I have been looking to purchase this property right now as we've been looking for houses. This has been the main one we would like to buy, but we're looking at other places. One of the big things we have is we'd like to be able to upgrade it to a three-bedroom house. Right now, it's currently only rated as two-bedroom septic. We have enough kids that we'd like to have a three-bedroom rated house and to be able to do upgrades to the house to make it such. Mm -hmm. So this is the main reason why my father-in-law has been pushing this in. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Thank Sounds you. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just get the paperwork to us. I don't understand that the um, sequence, um, I should uh, uh, contact the lawyer and have a lawyer draw up uh, an even. I, I talked with Peter Landry, I talked with Nelson Thibault, and they seem to think that, that uh, the Sledman's office or Chris could generate the, the document that says that even has been granted. So am I supposed to uh, uh, hire a lawyer? I can do that, I mean. We, we've both been hoping that nobody had to pay for it uh, <laughs> and trying to find one that we could just, you know, adapt for, for our uses. Um, I have not been successful in finding that. I was hoping that, that your surveyor could, could come up with something because, um, I, frankly, I don't want to spend town money to give you something for free. So uh, <laughs> if, uh, if, uh, if, you, if you can't get your surveyor to find such a thing, then, yeah, hire a lawyer and, and sketch it up and we'll... You know, okay. we'll look at it. I'm going to keep looking for you because I don't want you to spend money that you don't need to yeah, either. I just need to um, start the process. Like, he's not going to um, draw up the plan until he knows that you people will be right. okay with it. And then I can't hire a contractor to put in the system until I get an approved plan that has a lot of state. So I'm just like. Chicken and egg. Chicken and egg. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, in um, Mary, maybe you can. I was listening to you talk about failed septic systems. It makes no sense to me. He has three children in that house now, and his wife, and uh, they only have two bedrooms, so the septic system is legal. Well, they put another bedroom in, there's not going to be more people using showers. It's going to be exactly the same thing. No. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Unfortunately. But I'm trying to help the environment right. by making it a more serviceable septic system. I'm definitely in favor of the larger septic system for sure, especially because you, there is a load going in there right now. And it will fail at some point. So the quicker you get it replaced, but the better. I, I think the, I can speak for the Board of Selectmen that we're all in favor of this. Okay. It's just getting the paperwork. I don't think it would be very expensive to have a, a short little easement drawn up. But I think it's important. It's important because to get the paperwork going through the state, but also in the future, if you ever wanted to sell the piece of property, you know, your piece of property, oh, you do. definitely want. <laughs> yeah. Well, you are going to sell it. <laughs> but um, so if. The quicker you can get that done. Okay. Um, if if the easement that they give that the Clements give to us that Chris has approved by the attorney, do you feel comfortable in voting to approve it if the attorney says it's okay? So that'll speed up the process. It's really helpful because I mean I don't want to waste my time too. If what do you want to you want to take a vote? Yeah. Now? Now? Yeah. She's, she's saying yeah. Save I, a, just to speed the process up. I, I feel bad. I yeah. have a, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. More about a process question. Okay. So he's coming to us on this because it's town owned property. Right. Does something like this have to go to the planning board as well? Like if, a, if a lot line adjustment has to go to a planning board, would this not have to go to planning board? That's a good question, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't I don't believe so either. I'll, not I'll double check it. I'll, I'll run it as I'm talking to the lawyer about the other stuff. I'll I'll double check that. Yeah, first. or you could just ask Paul. I mean, it's not a lot. No, no, I've, I've I've talked oh, with Paul. I understand. About it. Yeah. I understand. It's just an easement. I Paul understand. Paul didn't raise that. He, he's he's been chasing this process all along. Okay. You know, so. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll take care of that side. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're yeah. going to take a yeah. vote now. I think okay. to approve it, subject to the lawyer's approval of the easement that you're going to submit. Thank you. Is that a motion? That, I think that was a motion. You um, want me to read the whole? Okay, there, there's a on. proposed motion down the bottom. Yeah. Okay, the Board of Selectmen approved the granting of a septic loading easement to Joseph Clement on town-owned land on Swan Drive, tax map 24, lot 38, subject to 
approval by the town's attorney of the easement being submitted by Mr. Fleming. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is an aside. Uh, haven't been in a public speech. We always had a um, um, a teachers' workshop day. It was um, for voting. Yeah. Yeah. Because we didn't want people talking for the elementary school to split. Oh yeah. And they, won't, they won't be. And we talked about that with the school. And the problem is, is that they don't they. Have, they have to schedule them so far in advance because parents have to take care of make sure that the children have somebody to take care of them <coughs> and you don't have a date. No, we just always don't. It's going to be one on election day. Yeah. Third on election day. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I mean, the hands are a little different than Massachusetts. They're pretty set in advance. Yeah. But the same thing, if you held one and knowing it's going to be used for election day, mm -hmm. you just can't tell parents when it is, then, then you don't push the school year back. And, and the teachers are gainfully employed, but if you just have a snow day type thing, you got a bunch of teachers that spend their bills. Yeah. No, I, I, we've already talked to them about the presidential election. That's a, that's a date already made. Right. But it was the primary that was just, it was everywhere. Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Sure. Thank, Thank you very much. Great. Okay. So, I'm moving upward. First draft of budget. Um, do you want to go into the? You do the other stuff first, or do you yeah. want? Yeah, we don't have an overlay. Oh, oh yeah, we do have the overlay to talk about the sale of town property. Okay, uh, memo number two. Um, the subject is Rogier. Um, a quick recap: um, You came out of that sealed bid process and rejected one of the bids as insufficient. Uh, I have continued discussions with one of those bidders about uh, three of the five lots that he was originally interested in. He has revised his offer um, to be $800 for three of the small lots on Rogier and Water Street. Um, and I have had kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations with each of you about that situation. I've tried to f find a few ways to make this happen, but we're it hasn't worked out so um, uh, I didn't pick up much of a consensus among you on how you felt about that offer if it's worth continuing down this road or not and it I can only do so much one-on-one -on -one and you need to talk about it publicly I'm okay with it me too uh, you know they're they're just sitting there it's not going to create a, p a parcel that can then be subdivided it's just putting these back onto the tax mat onto the tax doles yeah it helps him out, I think, as well as on one of them, right? Different. This is a different situation than the well okay. situation. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the same sort of situation. Across the street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm, okay. Not a problem. Okay. okay. Continue. All forward. right. So there's more consensus than I thought. Uh, the other one that you have approved is at the end <coughs> of Rogier. Um, you've you've almost put that to bed. We're just waiting for okay. somebody to complete a home purchase and then. Yeah, so you're going to see some more documents about that, but it's still moving forward. Hey, how, did the, how did the fire department burn go down there? Went well. Uh, fire department uh, did a training burn over there, right? A couple doors down from the piece we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was a good day for them. Nobody got hurt. Uh, only things good. that were supposed to burn burned. And, uh, Nothing that wasn't well. supposed good to training burn. Good, good training opportunity, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, they haven't come off the desk, but they are moving forward, so right. that's good enough. Okay, uh, do you want to do D also? Yeah. Okay, overlay. We, we touched on overlay as part of the rate setting process during your last meeting. I liked your suggestions. Um, and a lot better than 150. The yeah, nobody nobody at Avatar was willing to convince us that we needed to go that high. They weren't that's willing to. That's a lot to, of money. They weren't willing to break it down, uh, but perhaps more importantly, um, traded emails with our attorney on the Fairpoint case, and her guidance is crystal clear. There's almost no chance that this gets settled or, or, or uh, decided in 2016. Um, in 2016? Yeah. Yeah. Um, How about 2019? It, well, everybody knows it's going to the state Supreme Court. Uh, 
and so there they're gonna, <coughs> there's going to be progress on the case but she's seen no motion toward a settlement outside of court nobody has budged on anything so um, uh, her clear recommendation to us was don't worry about it in 2016 okay. um, so that is a that's a potentially a big liability in, a, in an abatement sense um, but it's not going to happen um, in all likelihood it's uh, about it's about three years at the Supreme Court if there isn't a settlement prior to that. So yep. yeah, I, I don't think that that's a um, problem. So that's a, that's a big piece of our outstanding unknowns. Um, the other piece is, is abatements that may come about as a result of either day-to-day -day business or the revaluation. Um, the 5,000 year-to-date um, abatements, is, was that as a result of the uh, reval? No, or is none that of that. Just other stuff? That's just okay. from the twenty. That's from prior, as in prior stuff that okay. has nothing to do with the reval. Okay. You can't even file an abatement for the reval until you get the second that's, that's tax right. bill. Yep. So, um, but it's. I mean, knock on wood. It is really quiet on that front. Um, we don't have inquiries. We don't have. When the second bill comes out. That's yeah. That's we'll, going to spur some interest. Yep. Um, so. I would say, um, as you recommend, do the 35, and we still have time. No, we wouldn't. Sorry, we wouldn't. You're no, right. no, this is. No, no time. Yeah. You could be setting a tax rate this week. I know I said that right. two weeks ago, but um, <laughs> we, we've got to be getting closer now. So. How do you guys um, feel? I'm good with his recommendation. Really? The 35? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Uh, All right. You you don't have to vote on that now. You're going to. I, I might have bumped it up to 50, but if you guys feel comfortable with that, I'll go with Well, you. it looks like there's been some good analysis done. And, you know, would we have to find 15 grand in the budget if it, if it went up to 50? Yeah, we you're could, right. We'd find 15 okay. grand in the budget. Okay, you make me you know? feel better. Okay. So. All right. I'm cool. We, can't, we can only say that, like three times in the budget cycle that if we needed to find <laughs> yeah, exactly every <laughs> single time you say it your possibility that you're going to have to find it goes up yeah exactly um so do you need a motion on that no you no you're gonna uh okay. that's just one less conversation we have to have at rate setting time okay. and, and you'll see that okay, plugged in okay. uh and the, so the only other one we get to rate setting the only thing left for you to decide is going to be if and how much to take out of the unassigned fund balance to offset taxes. That's right. the last question, which isn't fair to ask you until you see what the rate would look like otherwise. So. But you're you're optimistic. Uh, I will not give you anything publicly about where I think the tax rate is going to be. You like that? Aren't I'm, you? I'm I'm happy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation <laughs> with you. I'll call you tonight. <laughs> I was going to uh, I was going to give him the evening off. Mary, you are just my God. I gave him Saturday off. Jeez, now. We. It's, it's his birthday. Well, all right. Give him a half a day off uh, on Saturday. <laughs> okay. Okay. You don't need the rest of us to vote on any of that kind of stuff. No, no. You so anyway. Just... Hell, give him a raise okay. while you're at it. <laughs> it's his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I think a cupcake would do. <laughs> hey. Oh, he is cupcake. Oh. <laughs> So we have to look at the, um, this is the September 30th uh, uh, draft budget review. So this is draft budget and shows expenses through? Through September 30. Okay. Is this the one that I just went over with the budget committee? No, it uh, doesn't look is, the same. No, this is, this this is, is this proposed. Is proposed this is forward looking, 2016 okay. budget. Yes, you. Uh, the the left-hand columns I went over with them. Correct. Um, so the percent change is the incremental change in the budget change over the 2015. Oh, I like that. 2015 budget. budget. Yeah, that makes yes. sense. It's very so what's obvious. the bottom line? The uh, six percent flat. Point six. Point six. Yeah. Are you kidding me. Imagine that. Imagine that. All right. So this is a draft. Yeah. Um, the this is essentially uh, what our department heads have submitted to us and what I have plugged in for the things that, that we keep an eye on. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to walk you through kind of the, the outliers and the things that have, the big numbers that have changed here yeah. that we're working on. Okay. Um, I haven't even been through this with all of our department heads on a line-by-line -line basis, but it's 
um, where we sit uh, kind of coming in the door on the budget process we're 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 at 15 16 thousand more than than the current year budget or six tenths of six tenths of one percent more That's hmm. um, there are some unknowns of course at this point in the process but um, every year we do that were there any um, just at some point Chris just <coughs> are there any things that were left out that um, yeah, we're left out because we were trying to achieve this number. No, uh, this the the guidance here is you know what do you need to do what you to do the work you're doing now. And there are a few things where we're we're going to try and add some service capabilities and whatnot. But um, um, our department heads are are genetically predisposed to not spending more money than yeah. they need. Yeah. So. Uh, that's how you get to this point it's um it, we're not most importantly we're not we're not proposing really much in the way of service increases and there, we're not delivering much in the way of new services yeah. um a couple things will will jump out here but um so what that means is first of all no new people but you know that's where the money goes yeah. most quickly and so the department heads are, um, are okay with that yeah we're we are able to do what we need to do with the people we have we're fully staffed right now uh, still um, that in itself which is more people because that doesn't always happen so um, can I ask a question about elections yes yeah. you got election salary workers going up 83 percent but you got election training and support going down 86 percent and the, the number is almost they don't quite, but they, they somewhat offset each other. If you're if you're bringing more election workers on, which is would be the number going up. The, do I read that into that, or is it the same election workers uh, training? No, that that is the um, the cost of programming the the ballot machine bouncing around between different accounts over different years. The election uh, training and support line. Yeah, uh, I think. Oh. Uh, no. No, because then you. No, that's under. No, that you got a ballot printing. machine. That's under printing. Training, which is two hundred. You're getting oh, yes, way yes. ahead of me. You didn't even let me walk no, no, through I think, my spiel let, here. Let, let, let Chris do it in uh, his own way. I'm oh, no, sorry. No, we'll, we'll nail it. We'll I'm sorry. It I thought we were going into free form. Um, no, free form Friday, all of a sudden. Show us his outliers. Okay. Um, so go ahead, Chris. Forget that. Outliers. Okay. Forget. Forget. I, I uh, derailed the train. I didn't. I, I didn't have a big program, but I was going to start at the top and work our way down. <laughs> that's, good. that's a good way to do um, it. I'll wait. <laughs> okay. Um, the merit compensation pool. What, the the on the payroll things you will see in each department's payroll lines. Um, essentially, carrying forward what we're paying people right now. It will look like an increase because that is the um, the merit increases that we've we've given this year. Uh, and we project mm -hmm. um, our our current basically our current payroll our current schedules out into 2016 at the current rates in each of the department lines um, and then we um, put merit pay rates in under this line uh, in the executive line is where the raises will come from for merit raises for people next year so the merit compensation pool will not show in each department it correct the 2016 merit will not show there because we don't know how people are going to be evaluated right. and compensated right. next year yeah I'd rather keep um, it in the executive there is no cost of living <coughs> adjustment across <coughs> any you know any in any way shape or form well, uh, as as included know, there this. isn't going to be one Can and, and con correctly? conveniently the, the there is no for Social Security anyway for right. 2016 right. there is no change right. there's essentially no inflation so yeah um, Okay. Well, it depends good on for our ask. employees that but we switch to a merit system. Yes, right? yeah, I know. You're um, right. So what this is, this is pegged on the on the total payroll spend, and the number that you see here is just is a plug really, but it's three percent of our total payroll spend is that number. We'll come back and talk about how you want to structure the merit when, when we get when we get back to this, but that's where that number comes from. It's three percent of our merit eligible payroll. Um, so that would be an average, um, and that's, like I said, it's a plug. Um, other things happening, uh, we need to replace our server. 
it's seven years old and it's it's starting to show its its age didn't we have uh, money in 2015 for that though no we've we've replaced the police department started <clears throat> in 2015 okay that's probably what you're thinking we also um replaced two pcs at the fire department okay um in 2015 um so we're now out of xp <laughs> Hallelujah. Five years later. Uh, across the board. Um, so 2015 hmm. expenditures in line for, for line 15 equipment is zero. That is where we're going to buy the fixtures for the record keeping. Oh. That's coming where in. Where is that? Oh. Line 15. That is what I've been holding, holding that back <laughs> before I pull the trigger on those. That's the bulk of that. That so we, we haven't spent any of it yet. Right now, the yep. explanation said you've got 8,300 proposal. It says replace server and one PC. Yes, that's that for is 2016. That's for 2016. Okay. That same line. Uh, this happens to be the same number. Yeah, and the, the server's going to be around. The server's going to be around 6,500 bucks, maybe 7,000. We're we're just waiting on a number for that. Um, so at that. But the 8300 for 15 is going to be used for storage. Most of that will be used. We're going to end up finishing the year with some of that still in our pocket. Um, Just on the, uh, on the server, yep. given the uh, number of people on the budget committee with high tech experience, you're going to challenge that number? So oh, I yeah. Yeah, sure that's fine. A couple good that's a honking yep. server at seven grand. Yeah. Yeah, th that was the quick number out of our guy that server at. Um, Three, yeah. Yeah, I just we'd be careful so. with the number that you present to the budget committee on that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, that that one's early. You know, we do you, we don't have. Do a, we have a do we have a quote on that? We have a a kick around the, with our with our our guy. On it. We haven't got it? to quotes on that. Can I take a look at it. Oh yeah, no no we we're we're at just hey give me a number because we're gonna sure. we're going into this so that one <laughs> that one's is a you know it's a quick plug in. With that one, we'll be able to meet like by hologram. Um, no, the um, <laughs> it's you know, uh, the, the, a couple other things that are, that are going to get tangled up in that. Um, one is the software. I've been exploring the you know subscription software stuff instead of the you know buy the license yeah, business. Yeah. So that's still kind of up in the air. Um, oh, I I think it's a l still a little too spendy for the software subscriptions for a number of Microsoft yeah Office. like an office 365 or a Google, yeah. you know the Google Docs kind of thing we just have too many low intensity users yeah. you know we have so many email addresses yeah. you know for every elected official and all that are scattered all over the place yeah. and um, I, I don't think it's gonna work out I'm still still trying to make it make it to make it sense but I don't think it's gonna end up that way I think we're gonna be buying software this way a little bit longer um, <clears throat> there's a number in here um, a uh, a three year sh one third of a three year spread to redesign the website which excuse me we just started talking about mm -hmm. um, can, can you just like really use your narrative well and if that's like you know a cost that's being spread over three years I would flag that in that mm -hmm. narrative yep um, the way that I read this, you're, you're putting in forty-one hundred dollars a year for three years. That's not the no. There's a there's a hosting cost and a redesign cost. Okay. The hosting cost is uh, twenty-five hundred yep. a year for three yep. years. Yeah, that's our. That, we've been paying that all right. along for the. That's what the hosting cost. Okay. That's the hosting. The the redesign will okay. be sixteen hundred for three years, and I'll, I'll okay. break that out. Yeah. But, um, uh, Donna, Wednesday at three o'clock, we're going to do a webinar with that vendor. Okay. Uh, and I can send you an email to that okay. effect, but we just nailed that today. <clears throat> um, okay, moving right along, uh, the town clerk, you'll see some election expenses uh, tucked in here. Um, nothing too dramatic. Can I ask um, back on line 21 newsletter? Is that the that's, that's the town newsletter. So we yep. pay we pay for that town newsletter out of this yes. department. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, the uh, I don't see. A, don't we have a number of elections next year? We have four. How many do we have this year? Uh, one was the special election. That was this year. Yeah. So we had two. That doesn't 
expected, and they're only going to be going up two percent. You think that's no? Most of the most of the election costs show up later. This is just the town clerk. Portion. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. You're right. Um, I was jumping ahead. The next section in line 36, et cetera, is where you see the election costs coming in. Um, the uh, election workers, um, the, we think we're going to go from, we're going to about almost double that line. Mm -hmm. um, our four elections are the primary, the presidential primary, town meeting, the September state primary, mm -hmm. and the November general election. So those are all, they're all, all four falling as they do. Um, line 39 and line 41, um, the, this is what you were asking about earlier, Mark. Um, there are two, two main costs that have moved around historically. Okay. From, if you look, you know, we were looking at the 2012 election to get some Hey, what are we what are we spending and that kind of thing? Um, so this is a projection of what it's going to take to reprogram the machine for each time, pay for the ballots that we pay. We don't pay for the ballots for the state, the or, state the or the federal elections. We pay for the local ballots. Right. Um, there is some wiggle to that, depending on how those ballots, those March ballots, you know, how long they are, how whatever. But yep. um, this is what we think it's going to take to do that. We know we're going to have to reprogram the machine. Um, there was a little bit of talk about replacing the machine, but we're going to we're going to go for it this year. We think it's going to be okay, but it's on the radar of you know, we're going to need to do it at some point. But everybody seems confident that it'll it'll make it through. The, the so. newer machines are they? Do they have any other new features, or are they any, any better in any way? There's just same machine, just, same machine, just same machine, just no. We, we haven't got that far with it. We're, we're going to wait until we need to do it. Okay. Because um, that does not, the machine doesn't malfunction unless the the uh, bin is full. That's when it really starts mm -hmm. acting weird. You have to remember, like every couple of hours, to take your ballots out. It's okay. We can handle that. Gives us something to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't um, wait till the jam. So no, you should be proactive. <coughs> so the so line thirty-seven is going up just because we have four elections versus mm -hmm. yeah. typically we'll have one or maybe two. two. Yeah, two is right? an average, I think. Yep. And. And um, we're using the same election workers, so the training required is is lower. Is that do I read it that way? Yeah. Well, the the the, the programming of the ballot machine yeah. has been treated like a soft. Like we put our software costs in these yeah. support lines all over the place. Um, so it, it <coughs> and so I I put it in with the printing because it's. It, just to be so consistent. So it was previously in that line? In, in some years. Okay, in yes. some years it was under training and support. Yes. Okay. Um, so actual training that we think that we're going to have to send election workers to is, has gone down. It's, it's separated out now. It's, it, properly, well, yes, it's, properly it's separated. $500 yeah. and we've spent, we've really spent about 200 yeah. in that kind of, you know, there's other costs in there, but Really, um, well, I, th I thought <clears throat> a lot of the, the a lot of the tr you know like a, uh, the state provides a lot of that stuff, so yeah. there isn't. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um, uh, moving along, uh, we're flushing out some options on uh, down in line sixty-seven mm -hmm. of uh, getting our payroll onto direct deposit. Huh? Um, that's something we can, you know, there, there are control things that we'll have to talk about with you in addition to financial things, and, you know, we, we're not ready to do that yet. It but looks like it's still within the... Um, no, you're right. Okay, no problem. Uh, that will, there's a couple different ways we can do it, but it's probably going to mean buying another module for our bookkeeping software and paying some, the, believe it or not, the banks charge you more for something that I know costs them less to do, mm -hmm. but um, there'll be some costs associated with it, so... We're so still working on that. Make life easier for Betsy, um, our, our employees looking for. Yeah, we, we, there is a lot of running around associated with getting paid to work yeah. here. Um, you know, you all, so one of you has to come in and sign all these yeah. payroll checks on a very tight timeline. 
you know, between when they're printed and when they, we owe it to the employees. Mm -hmm. we, and you know, because we're often calling you and saying, hey, we, you got to get in here by X time to sign these things. Um, the treasurer has to do the same thing. And there's a parade of employees in the town office on payday mm -hmm. coming from home, coming from on their day off just, you know, to get paid. Yeah. And people making trips to get collect checks, and it's there's a it's a soft cost, but it's it's a real pain in the neck for a lot of people. I, mean, I, get, I get paid by a regular check, and I prefer a direct deposit. So yeah, and you have to go to the bank and, and, exactly. and deposit the check, and so it's you know it could be we may end up at deciding that it's just too expensive to do it, but it's so is that we're looking at it. Is that um, number um, like? Startup costs, or would it be that high every year? No, there's a there's a startup. There's a yeah. smaller number that's a continuing okay. number. Okay. Um, and and then um, did be the would it be um, voluntary to to, to yeah. have it direct deposit? Yeah. We wouldn't force anybody in. Yeah, and I, I there'll, there'll be a few be a, that will hold up. Yeah, but there'll be a, 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 a an uproar of glee from Keeping most. Keeping all of our employees happy. Yeah. Well, uh, I think some people enjoy coming in. You know, sure. picking up their check and that sort of thing, visiting folks, but at the same time, there's a whole lot of other ones that would just as soon have it directly deposited. Uh, again, Chris, just use the narrative a lot. If uh, if that 3,900 represents the first year and you have an estimate of what subsequent years would be, I'd put it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Chris, there was some investigation on changing Betsy's software to a different platform. Yeah, we're not gonna we're not going there this year, um, and it'll it'll be a while. Um, we're we, we're gonna, it's gonna take at least another year to make that decision, um, and we'll we're gonna consider that before we add to the one we have, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we're not we're not ready for that yet. We're get, Betsy's getting more comfortable with what we have still not great reporting still tricky um, but uh, we're gonna get a year of the fund accounting that we have now you know we've consolidated all the bank accounts and we have we're presenting everything differently so um, we're not gonna propose anything for next year to make any changes in that okay. arena um, a couple big things that we're still waiting on um, our contract with avatar uh, is up essentially we got through the reval uh, and we said to them hey throw us something and we'll decide where we want to go uh, you know if you want to go out to bid with it or you want to re-up with them if they come in with a number that you're comfortable with um, we're waiting to hear from them on what they would propose for us to, to stick with them. Did the board of uh, assessors ask for RFPs? They they are kind of waiting to see what Avatar oh, says okay. and uh, and waiting to hear from you on what you want to do. So, um, is it more or less up to them? I think they're looking at it as it's more or less up to you. Uh, and so we'll okay. maybe we want to have a conversation with the board of assessors. Probably as soon as um, we get the numbers back from Avatar. Yeah, and I, I think it would be a good starting point to have the Avatar. Uh, it's gone pretty well with them. It's and gone. It's you, gone quite well. Um, I think the people are, you know, now that we've fleshed out all of the the issues from five years ago, and I think people can see that Avatar actually is okay. You know, and it wasn't it wasn't Avatar all along. <laughs> they haven't got their yeah. December tax bills. Wait. <laughs> well, th yeah, but that's not going to be because of Avatar, believe me. Um, so you'll see that, um, you know, in the in 2015, it was the fifth year we. We, we put the um, the fifth year valuation cost we had actually put in the operating budget last year instead right. of going right. to town meeting and asking right. for another 23. Yeah. Um, so uh, we got we to put that back in the warrant, but it comes out of the operating budget because we yeah. it wasn't really optional last year. And you'll see a warrant article plugged in for that. Uh, moving along, line 85 is our um, employee health insurance. Um, just got those rates today. Uh, everything went up 4.2%, which is more than I was hoping for, but um, 
Jeez. And <laughs> since we entered this year, we've had two more eligible employees subscribe. They were eligible and weren't taking it. Um, we didn't really budget for that. Um, they're entitled to it. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's um, so that's that's a bite. Um, How many employees do we have covered by? We this have uh, nineteen. I believe. Nineteen full time. Yeah, just I, I happen to have this in front of me. A uh, a single person premium on our pro on our plan for 2016 will be 680 bucks a month. Uh, family 1800 and change a month. A month. Yeah. Yeah. We're this this number is an average of somewhere around twelve thousand dollars a year per employee. And the employees pay 10 or 15 percent of that premium yeah. as we changed right. that last year. Right. So yeah. right. um, this is net of that employee contribution, um, the number that you see here. The actual bill is bigger. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Not a lot you can do about it. No, there's not. No, I. Um, I mean, continuously search for better rates, but. Yeah. Um, the fool's there's. Good. Yeah. Have you ever? Have you ever? dabbled in the high deductible plans as a town have you ever looked at that and the health savings accounts yeah. and that kind of stuff um, we looked at high deductibles <coughs> um, and then offset them but um, you gotta be careful because you yeah yeah they don't like you to do that I don't like you to do it we're we're grandfathered we're with grandfathered our current are. thing so. that was, um, that was and made such a we, our, our grandfathering lapses next year and of so we might want to we might want to consider it just um, for this year we can't do the high deductible and then offset it, the town offset it. The arrangement that we have now where we're, we're backstopping that high, the deductible, right. um, we're going to lose our grandfathering of that and arrangement. And we won't be able to do it in the future. There'll be something else will take its place, but it won't be as flexible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a high deductible plan and oh. I mean, the, the, the premiums are less than what, what you're paying here. but. No. The deductible basically well, says twelve grand. Twelve grand? That's high. And I pay seven thousand dollars a year. That's that's good though. That is very good. And if I was on Obamacare, I'd be paying twenty thousand a year oh and God. I'd have a six thousand dollar deductible. Go figure. Yeah, so I'm gonna see what they you know what's out there the the small business i think the, the a nice thing to, to explore and i don't know if it's going to work out but if, if we could get into something with a health savings account you know we could really create a new benefit for perhaps the same money where you 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 know those health savings accounts go with the employee so um i'm going to flush that out some more but um the health savings account is the thing where you, you put money aside but you use it or lose it kind of thing right no no there are different there are different flavors of that that okay. um that uh one of them the 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 health care <laughs> ira or whatever that you know whatever that lingo is that that rolls over year to year um and then some of them are use it or lose it um so I'm we'll, we'll just, kick that around i'm just laughing because of the language that that we've been we've become used to using with health care companies <laughs> it's like mm. they don't give us health care and a health savings account you're saving for whose health it's like yeah i think there has to be more personal involvement in the in the health care costs and use of it um what happens to a system where it's all free is that it's overused i mean i've seen that happen in uh, in socialized countries where and then there's no money or space or time left for the people who are truly ill so I, I'm not totally opposed to Canada. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, health care accounts uh, we're just looking for the sweet spot of cost and, pro and providing yeah, our employees with yeah, I know. You know, yeah. a good solution and we've, for and we've done that yeah. so far yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a, we have a good plan. What we have we now have is solid. Plan, yeah. um, and at, a, at what is somewhat of a reasonable cost. Oh, don't even say that. I know, I know. What's it's, next, Chris? Uh, line 97. Uh, this is where the impact fee study would go, but we yeah. don't have a number. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, there's a so upside that could be a, risk there. That could be a pretty big upside risk. Could right? be. 
Yeah. Uh, isn't it like 20 grand to do that study or something? It was, uh, yeah, it was last time. How could that be so expensive? 2025 grand. And how much did we, did we recoup in? Uh, 19. 19. <laughs> on the town side. Yeah, on the town on side. On the town side. Yeah, 19 as in 19 dollars? Thousand. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. There's, if, but there's a bunch of the, the school is, you know. If the school choice. is benefiting from this, should they kick in? That's come up. <laughs> I'm serious. It, yeah, well. Why not ask them to yeah. kick in? We need a number before we can do anything. Yeah. We got we to gotta find that number. So, Okay, moving along. Um, uh, one line one twenty seven. If I go too far down, you you let me know. But uh, another penny. Yep. Uh, it's eight o'clock. So uh, line one twenty seven. There's a a number in here to reshingle over the police department. If you uh, are so inclined, the next time it's sunny, go out and take a look at it. You will be convinced. Um, You've already convinced me. The this is something we broke out last time as a, its own separate warrant article. Uh, we did that for the roof above us here, um, and it it's in here. So this is cooked in uh, in the number you already have. Okay. Um, so so, that's so a, if the planning board, oh, sorry, if the um, the thing that we just talked about that's twenty grand comes in, then this this is potentially goes out to a warrant article. One of the things that we could do. It, well, if you're if you're wedded to a bottom line number, then yes, that's how that's one way we could do that. Yeah. Um, uh, utilities are are getting trickier, but but generally good news. Um, um, electric, we are have been pretty stable. Our, if you look at where we are through two thirds of the year, we're in our, you know, we're in, we're in decent shape. We locked in. Um, we're locked in for another, uh, I think we've got another 16 months or so locked in on the rates we have. I think we're not this winter, but the following winter. You did um, a two year agreement? And it was, I think we did an 18 or a 22 month or something like that. We, we got through two winters the way that, that we did it. Did um, it work out with that company? Uh, it's been fine. It's, um, you know, you it, don't it's hear anything fine. about those companies anymore. Yeah, well, the the default rates have come that have, have become more competitive, um, oh, so okay. those alternatives are have been struggling. Um, You're giving away a lot of stuff if you sign up with them. No kidding. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, o uh, oil and propane are both down. You you saw those numbers come by a couple weeks ago. Um, so the, the uh, we're saving a lot of money this year. We we budgeted those probably a little too tight for the year we're in. No, uh, really. You know, you, as you see where we are falling on year to date, um, yeah, we're, kinda... we're we cut it too close, uh, and so, we're going to be okay. But um, so why continue why continue to bring them down then? Because our because the fuel prices have, have come down. Yeah, but they're they're. They've kind of troughed and they're heading back up. Yes, but we're locked in. Well, uh, we're locked in at lower. Yeah, we we locked oil. in two weeks ago. For oil on oil and propane. At what rate? Uh, I, I don't know. I'll get it for you. Uh, it's down. It's down. Down twenty something percent. Twenty nine percent from last year. All right. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to look back and say we caught the bottom on that mm. on that lock in. Uh, it, it'll be close. I think we missed it by a couple of weeks, but. Um, Good job. The uh, well, yeah. Did, if I had that crystal ball, I wouldn't need to work here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you enjoy it, so. Yeah. I would do it for free. <laughs> you uh, arrange that. Yeah. For, for now, <laughs> you're now you for for ten or fifteen minutes <laughs> anyway. Now you're starting to sound like certain candidates. Uh, <laughs> Uh, line 152. Uh, still back there? I'd already turned the page. Well, no, nice. I. Um, 15,000. Wow. We have oh. two dilapidated structures that we we own or are about to own, and we need to make them go away. Where are they? Uh, one of them is it is on uh, is on uh, Freeman Hall, across the street from the church at the intersection. Uh, we don't own that yet, but we're about to. Mm -hmm. um, 
we've uh, we ta we talked about this uh, yeah. a while back. Yeah, we're going to we're going to need to tax deed that and knock it down. It's um, it's, 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 it's dangerous. Right? It's getting to be dangerous. I never saw one hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred percent increase. Well, I, I'm just make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> um, the other one is a mobile home on Rogier that has been there and falling in on itself for years. They, that wasn't what they burned. Uh, no, they were next door to that. And they don't want to burn that. Uh, can't burn it. It's oh, full it's, of it's, asbestos. Oh, yeah. God knows right. what. I mean, it's a mobile hazardous, home. It's hazardous waste. Okay. Hazardous. It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah, it's ugly and it you know. Um, so anyway. I would um, just make sure that's plural in your na narrative that it's two. Yeah. Two tax deed um, properties. Yeah. Uh, those both of those well. The the mobile home one we've owned long enough that we just own it outright. We're you know, that's ours to keep. Um, with the um the freeman hall home depending on how what we do with that land I, I would assume that you would turn around and sell it it's a it's a nice lot um how big a piece was it was it too it wasn't too big well. not quite i don't think yeah. but um once we do come to own it depending on how fast you decide to sell it if you decide to sell it we will get that demolition cost back um in pretty quick i would think well, it depends on how soon you want to sell it. Right. Um, 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 there's, yeah, we have to talk about that. Okay. But we don't have to face that decision now. But at some point, this is money that we're going to spend and hopefully recoup. Hopefully recoup. Yeah. Um, the mobile home one, we won't because we'll never sell that parcel for what it's going to cost us to demo that trailer. But it needs to go away. Uh, workers' comp. Last year, I warned you and said this is going to get ugly with workers' comp. Um, it didn't. <laughs> uh, Very good. We got another contribution holiday. We can't see into the future on these contribution holidays, but it's basically a credit. We're in a pool. We get some of the savings back. Um, we're carrying a big credit forward into 2016 from that. Yeah. So that's going to offset our $32,000 premium. Um, that will probably won't last forever. We're going to workers' comp is going to bite us one of these years. We just don't know when. Mm -hmm. Um, property and liability um, that's the one we switched vendors a few months back yeah. um, so we're capturing that savings and that and the savings from doing both workers comp and property and liability together mm -hmm. so you're this is where we reap those benefits uh, even though and, and you decided to enter this three-year commitment with the cap on it so that's that's capping what we're paying in 2016 then um, yeah, was it a good thing we put that cap on it? I don't know, because we didn't reshop it. But um, we'll know in you know, I, you know in three years we'll see what the market says, and then we'll know. Um, okay, uh, now we're into the more department level things. Um, not much changing in police. Uh, same same staffing plan uh, to the letter. Um, a uh, can you can you ha help me understand why line 166 goes up 14 percent then? Uh, that is uh, a pay a, that that's a pay rate increase yeah. and a full year of the part time okay. officer that we didn't have okay. entering 2015. We now have Mike Lavoy part time yeah. pretty consistently, so that. We expect to actually use all our payroll budget in the police department for the first time in a long time. Yeah. Um, Which is a good thing. Uh, there is uh, there's a cruiser in here. Uh, as usual, this uh, this is going to be a Taurus. Uh, he's nice. looking for a Taurus, not an Explorer. I don't, you know, if he's no, no, no. Uh, he's going to trade the Taurus in. No, I think he's I think he's buying a Taurus too. I'm really? Gonna, yeah. Yeah, I'll have him talk you through it, but I think that's his. I he think was that's like, what he's like, he he was like he loved the explorers. I know. Yeah. But, it, but this is the year that the tr the tourist gets traded in. Yeah. Uh, really. Uh, all right. So police to fire and rescue. Um, again, same same payroll plan, uh, staffing plan. Uh, we we come back from the uh, the Deerfield Road hydrant project 
uh, we did this year, so that money kind of falls out of the budget. That's where the big savings comes from. Um, there's, uh, I'm in the two teens, 200 and teens. Wow. Uh, right down there. Can you slow down? No, no, no keep okay. going. Um, uh, so that's the big change there. Um, still plenty of equipment needs. You know, he's always got something that, that's coming up, up or aging. No, uh, there's nothing here for a new truck. No, that would be any right. warrant. So, um, moving along to fuel inspector, emergency management, highway. Um, Highway's always fun. Again, same staffing plan. Um, cost of fuels, you know, helping us. Asphalt prices have been manageable. Um, Everything's the same. Yeah, he doesn't like to change much. Salt, salt will, will go up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're locked in on those prices. Where's salt? Um, Top of the next page. Top of the next page. I got animal control. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Do we need to, maybe this is more of a non-public discussion, but do we need to be talking about any personnel things in the highway? I, I don't know any more than I did the last time we talked about it, but um, that, that's going to have a budget impact <laughs> whenever it comes. I yeah, know. but you know, um, we ought to know so that we're not, we ought to know while we're in a budget cycle if it's going to happen next year because it's going to be significant. Yeah, well, let's talk about that if we do department workshops. We can, okay. you know, if you want to go down that road, we can do it then. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, recycling center, again, same staffing plan. Um, we bought the baler this year, and that comes off the budget, so that... It creates what looks like savings there. By the way, when's the last time either of you were at the recycling center? Um, had to be spring. Long time? Yeah. So you should go take a trip. And I have, I have been unable to. They, they've got the three balers in. Nice. It, it's unbelievably well set up oh, nice. inside. Good. And they, um, they move some doors from, from one side so that they can go straight in and out with the the equipment it's just did we get to they're see loving it? the new door oh yeah, my yeah. God. yeah and they, th they have a nice roll-up door there and yeah you ought to just go in and give them a little attaboy um an attaboy an attaboy and girls at, at a person <laughs> salary and rec department oh you're skipping way ahead of me now well nothing else is Jumping jumping nothing else is yeah. interesting yeah. um yeah i think we're gonna as we come out come through the rec revolving process I think we'll probably be back on this line this is a different mix of people that I, I think it's too early to get too far in the weeds on um, okay. we're as we come out of that rec process if you want to yeah we should revisit it see then. what that comes and then we come okay. back to this I think it makes okay. a lot of sense this this is a little bit more hours but what will change this more is how we pay for these different things so okay. the, um, that sounds good and the the, real, the the bigger change here, and actually it's kind of related, we're shopping right now for uh, online registration systems for recreation programs. Yeah, we looked at that, that a few years ago. What was it called? Uh, there's, there's a zillion of them. It wasn't at that time, um, and it, I, I liked it. I liked that idea. The, um, you know, this is something that, that I know our, our users are looking for. Um, no, what? No, no, no. Okay. No, there's, there's, there's dozens of them, I, I know. Uh, but anyway, um, it is a big customer service improvement. It would take over a lot of the things that we're doing, not manually, but close to manually with, um, with scheduling and registration stuff. And it, it could also allow us to pull back on one of our uh, positions, our summertime office position has less to do if we do this so there's going to be some changes Will there also give us better um, data about yes. what people are registering for and yes. program utilization yes and, um, and remarkably consistent data because it's all 
in the same system. So yeah. uh, I think what I was thinking about was um, paying by credit card. I think that was that's another component that uh, we're kicking around. That'll be part of this. I, um, I like that idea. Yeah, and it um, like better better accounting. You know. Yep. Um, yeah, we're, and we actually, we, we, we talked a little bit about doing that in the town clerk's office, too. Um, We've talked so, about that, and I think um, you lose a certain percentage. That's the problem. Well, the town can't lose anything. It's the, 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 the client, it the would customer be, yeah, would have to pay. Fee. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, and that can be a substantial fee when you, you know, you're talking ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. Not the tax collector, the town clerk. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I was thinking the whole office. Okay. Um, but we're not ready for that yet. We'll, okay. That'll be independent. There shouldn't be any okay. costs associated with it. Um, library, uh, they've shuffled some people around. They're going to change their hours a little bit next year. They're going to be open for a couple more hours a week mm -hmm. or an hour and a half or that something. Is. So that pushes mm -hmm. a little bit of change here. But they are uh, coming in flat. They're in any good idea shape. What, what that's coming from? Because didn't they just cut back hours? Like a year or two ago? Uh, not, not in my time here. Um, I bet it has something to do with Sunday and which day they're closed. I, I don't want to say okay. something and then have it wrong. But I, yeah. Um, the, um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to miss isn't it speak. Friday, on that, like but they used to be open on Friday and they're not open on Fridays anymore. Yes. Used to be. I, I mean, I'm amazed at how many people use our library. It really is well utilized I think that, that's me. about it uh, yeah so that's where we are today okay um, very very good By the way, draft. yeah thank you this is very good uh, very we good. need to have something to the budget a draft to the budget committee in two and a half weeks mm -hmm. um, so I guess we just need to decide how fast you want to move and who you want to talk with at the department level and when do you want to do that. Uh, if it's important to you that we get it, that done and before your next meeting so we can revisit this again before we go to the budget committee. So November 5th is the date? Yep. That's when, that's when it goes to the budget that's committee? That's the first draft of the budget committee. Um, and of course, then we have you know we, we meet on the seven weeks after that until we really need to put it to bed. So we, we meet on um, the second month, you know, the second of November. Yep. That, would that give you time to prepare whatever we decided on that evening hmm. for Thursday? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a first draft, so I'm not I'm not looking to you to make final decisions on the whole thing on November second. But. What do you um, what do you need us I to do? I want you to be comfortable with the draft that goes to the committee before we go right. to the committee. Right. What do you need us to do before the second, or can it be done on the second? Have we got much of a schedule on the second? Uh, the see. reason I ask is we could maybe meet with some of the um, remaining department heads. Yeah, because it's only two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it is. Wait, Max. There's uh, some travel coming up next week. On. I'm, I'm hoping we can do it on the second. second. Would that work for you? Fine, I'll be here. I'm just wondering what our agenda looks like for that night. Uh, nothing. Cool. Keep it that way. And when do we pick up the CIP discussion again? Do you want to do that on that at the same time? What have we got next week? Next week, you don't have anything as a group. And you're, you're traveling. I've made it that week because we don't have anything. Right. So we don't have we don't have a meeting next week. No. Okay. No, we don't. Not till the second. Hmm. So what we could do is, do you want to meet with uh, additional department heads and the CIP at the same time? Do we want to revisit some of our previous um, department heads? How, how do you want to move forward on this? Are you going all week next week? No. Be Tuesday. You leave Tuesday. Go back till Friday. Um, CIP and department head seems like a lot. Okay, we won't do it then. Okay, then we'll just meet with. We can meet with um, 
police. I don't want to do this. Who else do we have besides police? We've done fire, highway. Uh, in the CIP context, you only you only identified fire and highway as the ones that you wanted to talk CIP with, and that. Okay. So you can certainly add to that list, but no. At your first yeah, glimpse of the CIP, you said these are the two that we really want to focus okay, on. So. Um, do, so what we could do, we've already, in a sense, we've met with fire and we've met with highway for CIP, but that also sort of takes in the budget, or, or, or should we meet with those guys again? It's what, what do you want? How, how, how down into it do you want to get? How fast? Um, you know, I, I'm comfortable going to the budget committee with a draft and saying we're still working on these things. Can you have a, but, can, what can you? But it's your document, so I want you to be comfortable with right. where that sits. Do you think, um, Mary, that maybe it would make sense for us to all take, the, take this draft budget, go through it, mm -hmm. you know, in more detail, line by line, and see if there's any areas that we have questions about that we want to dive deeper into before, between now and then? Um, I feel pretty comfortable with what was explained tonight. Um, your questions were very good. Um, I'm just thinking that uh, is there an ample opportunity between now and the second to sort of confirm or you'll have better numbers? Yeah, some of these things will get flushed out a little bit more. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want, want to just do that? I think it's fine. I just, to me, Chris, the biggest thing is making sure that the narrative is spot on and robust. Because, yep. you know, and you'll make it easier between the first draft presentation and the next draft if you've got all of that stuff there and you keep it accurate. So people don't have to ask. Right. That, you know, if it's clear what's happening. So, yeah. It's a pretty simple budget this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. I, yeah, I don't think we have to beat it to simple. death. Yep. Yeah, the only you, don't, you don't have any other major things happening. No, there's not. There's um, so no. There's a couple little facility should, things, but nothing. Should we talk about the Warren articles real quick? Yep. Um, yeah, that's the thing. That's 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 where the, un, the unusual <coughs> money is being spent. Yep. Um, yep. You have the the little cheat sheet working mm -hmm. list. Uh, operating budget, road reconstruction. We have a number from John. Uh, which is the same as last year. Um, the reval, we need to start, we emptied that. Uh, we need to start building up for our next reval. Yep. Um, I, pres I assume that's, you want to keep doing that. Well, we were doing 20 a year before, right? 23. Okay. 20, 23. What a wide number. Well, they knew the end the number. We, we, knew the, we knew the, yeah, and when we signed that contract yeah. with Avatar before, it was flat. Some people did. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't like it, but me and Hal did. Yep. <laughs> um. See, I don't always agree with her. <laughs> uh, highway. There's times when you are wrong. Wow, I was right this one. <laughs> and yes, there are plenty of times that I'm wrong. Uh, highway Capital Reserve, we came out of CIP with a lot of heads nodding that we need to do more, yeah. uh, but we haven't finalized that. That's, um, uh, that had been 50, so I penciled in 75, but yeah, pending CIP. Um, fire Vehicle Capital Reserve, um, this, is what's, this is after we empty what's there. Mm. This is, um, this is what we have to build? The incremental. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we have to raise by taxes. But, um, oh, that's that's what we would have to raise if we were to get the quint. Well, Correct. or I shouldn't say raise. Um, the bonding authority. Well, for. So you, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. the you don't have the fire capital reserve fund in here. The unless the, what do you mean though? The number well, that we're going to put back into, ca into we're gonna, capital. We're going to we're going to Oh well, if you if you want to then put something back in then that's another one I think you have to add it yeah um, I think I think there's two I think there's one of them is do we buy a quint and the other and is, the other one is how much money do we keep putting into the fund now we've gone up to um, 75,000 a year on highway is that something that the I think you have to today the cost of machinery 
I think you need to decide what you want to do about I think the we need to see some yeah. numbers. Yeah. I think we need yeah. to crunch some numbers before we figure that out. You know, what, what we yeah, have Yeah, what we're looking night. at. Yeah. Yeah, and what, what you're going to put on the ballot is, a, is going to drive, yeah. you know. Uh, the tricentennial fund, that seems to be habit. The uh, HVAC trust fund for this build or for town buildings, it's the same amount. I'm kind of... I, I've never really been comfortable with three because I know that a boiler is going to cost 20. Do you want to go to five? Right? If we have to replace yeah. the boiler here, we're talking 20 grand, right? Yep. Yeah. So we put $6,000 aside so far. And, and we know it's just it's a time thing. It's 20 or 25 years old. It's going to go. What do you feel good at? I mean, yeah. you, we've got six in there prior to this three. Yeah. yeah. Probably, huh? And it, it's it's so that it's, brings us to that would bring us to nine, which is only going to be a yeah. What I'm saying, hey, if we got to find fifteen in the operating budget, we can find. <laughs> <laughs> There's two. There's two. <laughs> um, I think. I think. How would you guys feel at ten? That'll I don't know. That, I don't. To the I don't know that if you. Well. I don't know. I don't think I don't you know. put ten in there. I no. think you put five to seven, or maybe you put six or something. Six was the number I was yeah. thinking of. Okay. You put six in there. Yeah. Okay. You know, at least so. Then, then what we're saying is, we're if we put six in there next year, we're six months away from putting six in. Now you got twelve, right. and if something breaks, you yeah. only got to find six in the budget. Right. right. No, eight in the budget. Right. But who's counting? Mm -hmm. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, we know you can do it. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say, yeah, I think six. Uh, social service agencies, that's the number that's been the number for a long time. Um, Are we going to do ready rides this year? Why? We, we had pushback last year uh, on the fact that we, were, we, we had agreed as a board to fund it one year, mm -hmm. and, it and then they fun. were going to get... This would become self-sufficient. They're going to become self-sufficient, but now we've done it three years in a row. Mm -hmm. And I remember we we dug into that, and we were never able to get the minutes to tell us that that's what everybody's understanding was. Well, I understand that that's what I'm I was there. So I, uh, yeah. I, I I was I was there, and I was the one that put out the challenge. I I was the one that that was questioning whether we should add this. And then I was convinced, okay, let's do it one year and see how it goes. Yeah. But I also was the one that put the challenge out that said, you know, they should, because we cause Janet, Janet had said that she, they were going to be seeking um, outside donations. So apparently that didn't pan out. No. no. And so then the question becomes, you know, how utilized is it in town? Is it worth? Which yeah. I think the answer last year was, it's used quite a bit. Right. Right? Yeah, we, we got some as good numbers out of it. As long as, as we're it, using yeah. it. Oh. I, I don't have a problem putting, you know, putting the money out there for the town to approve to continue to use it. I really don't. I think it's a service that we absolutely have to have. And maybe it's something that you can't, it can't be for free. You know, maybe it's something you have to pay for. And we've got to get used to it. Okay. Uh, ambulance, special reserve fund, that number comes out of, uh, out of the chief, and that's what he thinks we need for the year um, and that's offset right yes um, by the way just so you know on ready rides I donated privately well, and there was you. one other individual who lives down in the lake who said he would donate privately I don't know if he did well that's nice thank you but you know we're gonna we continue to move the ball mm -hmm. to, into a collectivist kind of thing and you know we can just pay for it all the the it's next one, really. you have uh, you have historically set money aside for the lake monitoring program. About three days before they found the milfoil in the lake, this summer I had written to you and a few other people and said, "Hey, you know, a lot of other towns use a capital reserve fund to do this kind of stuff, both to do the monitoring programs and to respond when the." You know, when the need arises, they build up. The inevitable happens. Uh, they build up reserves to deal with it, 
and use it typically as a matching or you know they have some kind of process by which they uh, work with private landowners and other granting agencies to do the response work or the cleanup work um, and so I say and we should we think about this and then they found it and uh, you know kind of stopped right there but um, we usually um, put in the event four thousand that's what I'm thinking four thousand we do four right. so would this be I don't see that four here now well this would be invasive species plus funding the lake Monica. yeah so the the I think the thinking is that the four, oh, okay. would, four would come out of there yes right yeah yep. and I and I was thinking that over time yeah and do I, you and I had a conversation about uh, the state park and we know that there's a big exposure there and we aren't able to monitor it well enough is there a desire to do more there to help do more there and build up some reserve so well, where is the state um, in all of this I mean, there well the state the state responded pretty office. well the state responded pretty well this first time out yeah, I don't know how long yeah. it's gonna be there they, that's they the thing they did and, and um, as a matter of fact they've been back two other times to oh, pull, okay. Okay. pull um, stuff so I am getting your uh, opinion on this from the PLIA okay. there they have a board meeting this week and um, they're gonna come back with their thoughts on you know, what, what might be the best way and okay then we, we talked as well about how do we get the, the state engaged yeah okay. yeah I, I think to make this something like this palatable it's got to be there's got to be some commitment of other money to go upside it you know, to, yeah, well, and, I, mean, you know, there's, I know there's already there's some there. Already two other, um, you know, between the but, PLIA and the, yeah. and the Hampshire Lakes, there is already money that goes against yeah. it. But the thing that we're wrestling with is, you know, um, with Horse Island, you know, we've tried to cover the, the busy, what we believe to be the busy time. So Friday night, Thursday night when campers are putting in, Friday night when campers are putting in, and Saturday morning when campers are putting in. So that's how we've staffed it. Clearly, that's not sufficient. But what's the sweet spot, right? Right. So. Yeah, there's a diminishing return on that, I'm sure. But um, uh, uh, the uh, something I, I wrote to you all about, I don't know, six or eight weeks ago. That the law has changed to allow you to uh, set aside contingency funds, um, and I. Throw it at you. I don't. It's kind of like the school is doing. Yeah, sort of same idea. You you have to. Uh, is it, there's a dollar amount. It's a percentage of the budget, and you if you use it, it's got to be for you know things that you didn't expect, uh, and then you report out on it in the following year. Fudge fund. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't particularly uh, care for it. It does raise a question though. Um, the school board chair thought that the way that we um put put any um underutilization of our budget each year back into the general fund is very similar to what they're doing for contingency fund i don't think it is and Not i could use i could use some help explaining that i wasn't in I mean, un appropriated but unspent yeah. monies yeah okay yeah i could use some help explaining that because she's under the impression that that they're one and the same and, and therefore the rest of the budget committee is under the impression now that they're one and the same the two um, Which it, and I said that they're different but I wasn't yeah in a position so to explain it well the school can overspend their bottom line the town absolutely cannot without permission from um, Department of Revenue administration or going to Superior Court there's no way that we can overspend our bottom line schools okay. can do that so that's one of the big differences so how is that how, is, how does that make the two funds different well, they don't have a uh, unreserved fund balance. Correct. We have that. Correct. They, but, so but the all the money that they have left over, the way it always was until this contingency fund thing came up, was it all went back into unreserved fund balance. Understood, but, yeah. now, but now that fund gives them that opportunity. A certain percentage. I understand, I understand. But, but isn't the general fund essentially the same thing for us? No, because I think that contingency fund they can spend without without permission. We cannot go into our reserve fund balance without a great deal of work. Very, you know, where you're explaining it to the state or the superior court. So they, so <coughs> they, so they want you. So to, you can't really spend with abandon. So they want you to have a certain 
overlay a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. But you can't spend it without going through hoops. Right. 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 Okay. That's to me. Check and the contingency is different in that yeah. it's the governing body that has the authority to spend it. Right. And that's that's what this would be would be a, so could you yeah. could you There's do no me a favor Chris and and write me a paragraph or two that explains the difference yeah I, I'm gonna get some help myself because okay. when I get into school stuff it's you know yeah. it's a little different um, yeah. and as we I think as you look at the numbers for the tax rate setting process it's gonna come it's gonna become very clear like oh yeah I get it see the school yeah. could but, always um, could over ex, they could over spend their bottom line they always could I suppose the contingency fund, in a way, is a buffer because then it doesn't come directly out of taxes. All, all I'd like to do, all I, all, all, my only objective is to clarify the differences because it was brought up to me. Um, that there is no difference. That, yeah, it was brought up to me and, and then explained to me that there is no difference when I know that there is. And I wasn't it's in a position to, because um, I don't, I wasn't in a position to, to properly give the argument back but if I had something written that I could give to everybody so they can understand it and we can put it to bed then it's well, not it sounds like the, the authority to spend is the is the biggest exactly. difference yeah. okay with contingencies yes with a contingency, well so yeah. you can you have that authority yes without with the general reserve, reserve fund you don't correct got it that's it that's a simple difference yeah. so I rather like Having, making it harder to spend the well, taxpayers' I, money. I was actually, I think, the only person on the budget committee that voted against that contingency fund. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and because I, I, because I just think there's other vehicles. You know. Yeah. And to me, it was just money sitting there, piling up. Well, not just piling up; it's tempting you. <laughs> spend me, spend me. It. As we have all these discussions of, ah, we'll just find fifteen thousand dollars in the operating budget. We actually can't do that in November and December. Mm -hmm. We, right. you know, spending freeze. There, you, you, you've you've been in years where you're watching, sure, really close. Yeah. Like, oh no, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. because the the cap is harder. The the cap is, it's a cement ceiling that that you can't go over. Um, which, you know, as you say that. You know, without going so, through a lot of hoops. My and what, what, the, what, the, what, the, what the effect of that is, is that it hold, and this may be your intent, it holds you back all year. We're, we're constantly operating not only against what we wanted to accomplish in the year with the money that we had, but we're, we're keeping some dry constantly. I, I like the and fact that, that we don't have a contingency fund, and I don't believe the school should have a contingency fund either, because it takes control away from the people of the town who come out and discuss the budget yeah, no, a, and, and understand what we're going to be spending on now you got this contingency fund you can spend it on anything you don't well want on the yeah. town never even knew you were going to do it yeah that's the was it for anything that you want or was it for no it's unanticipated expenses there, there, you know yeah there, uh, there's yeah. there are some rules that yeah. they have yeah. to follow yeah, so. yeah, yeah it can't be yeah. that you know oh um, New staff. More, right. Oh, we had an opportunity to hire somebody, so we did. I mean, that doesn't work that way. It's, you know. Um, I'd, I'd like to know what it does. It seemed, it seemed to be, it's not for an unexpected emergency. So let's it move on. It seemed a little more liberal than that. Okay, uh, but let's move on. I think we're done. The other potential, uh, oh, um, we could see Strawberry Lane come up for public acceptance. It's moving along in its construction schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, the library needs a new roof, which we did not incorporate into the operating budget, uh, but we need to reshingle that. Um, mm -hmm. It it really needs it on the front half, the front building of the two. The addition it could last a little longer, um, but we're looking at it. It's a, it's a couple years behind, maybe a year behind needing it. So we're looking at it. Let's just do the whole thing. We're going to be up there. It's going to be cheaper to do the whole thing. Sure. Uh, do you want to put that in the operating budget? Not we can. It, yeah, uh, I'm just wondering why we would treat it differently than the. the, the uh, we, we like the. However you want to play better. it, we can. We can put it in the operating budget if you want. Yeah, I'd like it in the um, operating budget. It's. It's it's something you got to do. There's no choice there, really. Rules are things you don't have choices with. The question would be why are we putting one in more in one in operating budget? Does anybody? Do we all agree we want it in the operating? What? The roof to the library. In the operating budget? Yeah. Rather than a warrant article. 
Because if the water article fails, you don't get a roof. Yeah, but we did the same thing here. We had the same argument here, and we put it out as a warrant article, and the, and the townspeople passed it. So then it. why not do the, the, this building yeah. in a warrant the article? Department. Same, same yeah, I, I just want them to be handled yeah. consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. all. Yeah. Unless there's a reason not to. Unless there's uh, a critical, a critical more critical need, issue here that we need to be aware of. I think rooms are always um, It's Yeah, well, this one's worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they both need it. You know, um, I, I I always I always err on the side of I'd like people to know what what they're spending on, but you know, you guys think it's better to yeah. And I, I at some point they got to get done. At some point, as we get bigger and as the town spends more, the dollar threshold for what finds its way to a warrant article probably needs to climb. And I don't. That's up to you to decide where that is. But getting bigger and we're um, spending more. It happens, I, you know. Uh, uh oh. How how much time do you want to spend at town meeting doing these things? How much? Do you, you know, it's it, I'm not. It's food, it's food you, know. For um, you know what, guys? We, we we said for now for two years in a row that we were going to talk. We we're going to actually do an, a proper investigation on whether we're going to go continue with town meeting or go after SB two. Good, good question. I have provided you guys for two years in a row. The statistical mathematics that, that proves you really have? That, that yes I have that proves that the the turnout that we get is woefully inadequate inadequate to get a statistical sampling. So you know what we have at town meeting now is clearly the ability for gang rules, which is something Absolutely. that we don't want to have. Yeah. And as the town gets bigger, um, you know I think that we really need to put some serious until thought we, into that. Until we get a handle on how the the petition warrant article is going to be changed at the deliberative session, we're not really solving any problems. Mm -hmm. So, well, yes, you, yes, you are because the things that we vote on at town meeting, when you have seventy people representing forty five hundred mm -hmm. at town meeting, the things that that get voted on there are, to me, better voted on on a ballot where you're going to get seven hundred people to vote on it. At least then you've got. So that question would have threshold. to go on the warrant this year. It would have to go on a warrant this year. Let's look into it. It's a good question. It's a good. Well, while we're debating whether or not we want to put it on, we should begin we the should, process. We of should get some information. You know. Get us information. Okay. okay. I hate to do that, but it, it is becoming painfully obvious that people just. Are not inclined to come to the town meeting. Um, it, it could be that they're just too busy. Whatever it is, you have to turn on to seventy people. And, and you want like, those people that can't make it to town meeting to still have a say. Have a say. Yeah. So. How do you feel? Well, um, I like town meeting. Me too. I think you still have the deliberative. No, situation. no, I understand. I, I think that um, sometimes when you get to the situation where you have you know, a default budget as an option, then, you know, your budget really never has an opportunity to go down. Your budget only always goes up because minimally you're starting at you know, what you had this year. Um, I think I would like to see what people in town think about it. There's one way to get your their opinion. To put a warrant article. Put a warrant article on. And then, and then, and then, and then, then you know get, for some, sure. get some education out there and let people decide. Yep, yep. That's the best way to get the feedback. I know people feel left out, but they can't make it to town meeting. Yeah, the flip side though is that at least people who are voting at town meeting have an opportunity to hear both sides of an argument and to be informed about what they're voting on. Yeah, but you should be able to do that at a properly run deliberative session. So what makes you think deliberative session attendance is gonna be better than town meeting? It's gonna be about the same. So then what, so, what do we gain? But what we gain is that people come, people have still an opportunity to, to vote to on every in. issue. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, a lot of people don't. But you still then don't have people who are getting the benefit of the education on, on the issue. Well, there'll be plenty of education. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I, think the I, under, I, understand what you're, I understand what you're saying, but I, I yeah, think Yeah, I mean, that, we can look at it. I'm not sure that I'm in favor of it, but. I don't, I, I, I've fought it tooth and nail for years. I'm not saying that I'm in favor of it either. I'm saying 
for two years in a row, we've said that we're going to look at it, and, and every, sing, every and every year we don't. I see the numbers doing the wrong. It's discouraging at our meeting. I really, it yeah, I, I've seen a, a, a tremendous drop in the 15 years that I've been here. Well, the last so. two years we haven't had anything big, big, real big either. It's been pretty much business as usual. When people come out, is when there's something really big, big and extraordinary, like about 70 feet long. <laughs> Seventy-two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, if that doesn't stir some interest, like a, like, I'll be, I'll be, yeah, I'll yeah. Be sad. So before we adjourn, I just, I do have one other question, not to put you on the spot, but um, what are you doing with the school? Um, driving by it periodically. With with regards to what? CIP. Uh, I believe that they're coming to the planning board. That there have been, you know, discussions about needing to have a common view about uh, CIP, and I believe that they are coming to this to the planning board. That they have said that they'll share it with the planning board, that they'll share it with the board of selectmen, and I believe they're being invited to be a part of the impact study discussion as well. Okay. The reason is at a recent budget committee meeting, the school board chair said Donna Danis is helping us with the CIP. And then further, she went on to say, Donna Danis is keeping me updated on what's going on with the, with the Board of Selectmen. So I would just like to know no, what all that's all about. I don't know what the, I, I, don't, I didn't know that I was helping them with the CIP. Okay. So I will <laughs> find out what they think I should be doing for them. Okay. But. And then re with regard to the happenings of the Board of Selectmen? Mm -mm. Okay. Then maybe the school board chair would like to, at the next budget committee meeting, clarify her statements. I'm not sure why it matters, but if you wanted to clarify, I, go ahead. If there's something going on, I just feel yes. that we all ought to know. If there's not know. anything going on, then it shouldn't be represented that there is. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm holding clandestine meetings in town. I, I'm not, I don't care, actually. <laughs> I, frankly, I, believe me. Believe me, there have been plenty of people saying that I'm, I'm in secret meetings. I'm in secret meetings with Maggie all the time. But I, I just, you know. And he has the scars to show it. I don't, I, don't, I don't really care. Actually, I think it might be actually good if that were to be happening. Um, because there should be some way of getting some communication going. I know that there's a lot of bad feelings on their side toward us. And there's surely some bad feelings on this side. Um, but at some point, adults need to become adults and start trying to work together again. Um, and with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Unless there's anything in non-public or anything. No. Everybody's cool? Not yeah. a quarter of okay. nine. <laughs> okay. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Good night, folks. <laughs>